Hey everyone, I'm going to knit a scrubby like the one that I have here. And what I use for my scrubbies is this nylon mesh. It's a little bit different than the tool that some people use to knit their scrubbies with. You can use this stuff or you can use the tool, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the difference between the two is the holes in this nylon mesh are a little bit bigger than what you'll find with the tool. And I got mine at fabric.com. You can get this at Joann's. And they actually have something called scrubby mesh. So I think that's the same thing as this nylon netting right here, but they actually call it scrubby mesh. And it's fairly inexpensive. And you don't really need very much to make a scrubby like this. So here are the colors that I will be using for my scrubby today. My netting came to me like this. You might get it in a roll or still on the cardboard bolt from the fabric store. So what I did with mine, I just opened it up and then cut straight up strips about one inch wide. And they don't have to be perfect. I wasn't measuring. You can have a little more or a little less than an inch. And I'm just using four colors here, so one strip of each color. You can use the same color, you can use as many colors as you want. You can make these bigger. It doesn't really matter, it's just whatever you would prefer to do. I'm going to use these size 10 double pointed needles. These are Deborah Norville needles. You can use straight needles, you can use circular needles, whatever you have, and they don't even have to be size 10. This is just the size that I have found feels the most comfortable to me for knitting my scrubbies. I'm going to start here with my first strip, and I'm just going to do a long tail cast on. And I'm just going to cast on about 10 stitches. And you don't want to pull really, really hard on this because it can rip if you're not careful. I left myself a pretty long tail. I think I'm just going to go ahead and cast on two more for a total of 12 stitches. Okay. And then I'm just going to knit. Just do this in garter stitch. I'm just going to keep knitting in this blue until I run out and then I'll switch colors. Okay, I've knit four rows with my blue here. I don't have enough to go across one more time, so I'm going to add my second color here. And you could actually tie your strips of netting together. That's one way to do it. Or I'm just going to 
pick it up here and I'm going to knit my first stitch with both strips that way it locks in the old strip of netting just knit one or two stitches with both pieces I think I'll just do the first two here and then I'm going to just drop my blue and continue knitting with my yellow here and I'll just do about four rows in my yellow and then I'll switch to my next color Okay, so I don't have enough of my yellow to knit back one more time, so I'm going to add my reddish netting here. And again, I'm just going to hold on to the tail of my yellow and knit a couple of stitches with that and my red nylon just to lock the yellow in place here. Oops. There we go. And you want to make sure that you're knitting with your the longer part of your new color. You don't want to knit with the short end or else you will run out, of course. Same way as you would when you're adding a new color of regular yarn. Okay, so I have my first two stitches with both colors. I'm just going to drop my yellow tail and continue knitting for four or five rows with my red here. Okay, time for my last strip here, my green, and again I'm holding the last little bit of my red strip with my new strip of mesh here, and just going to knit the first couple of stitches with both of those held together. and then continue on with my green. So another option that you have with knitting these scrubbies, you can take some cotton yarn like the Lily Sugar and Cream or the Peaches and Cream Cotton and you can hold a strand of that together with your tool or your nylon mesh as you're knitting. That will make the scrubby a little bit bulkier and it absorbs dish soap a little bit better than the plain mesh, but you don't have to do that. It, it's even more fiddly than just working with the mesh alone. Sometimes I do it that way. And these are really nice because you don't have to have a lot of materials to knit them. You can use up scraps that you have, you can use different colors. It doesn't really matter. It's just a good way to get rid of little bits and pieces of stuff that you have lying around. Okay, so I'm just going to work a few more rows in this. And I'm doing about four or five rows of each color. I was only able to work four in my blue because I also used that for my cast on. My other colors here I was able to get five rows of knitting. You can do one row of each color. You can do as many rows as you want. It doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong way to do this and they don't have to be perfect. Okay, so I think 
I'm just guesstimating here that I have just enough to do my bind off row here. And I'm just going to do regular knitted bind off for this. Okay, last stitch, and you just, whoop, there we go, so you just pull your tail through as you normally would for knitting, there we go, there that works for me, and now I'm just going to take a crochet hook and Weave these ends in a little bit. I'm not really worried about this looking perfect because it's just going to scrub dirty dishes. I don't think anybody cares if it's exactly perfect. I don't. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to go through one more stitch here and then I'll snip this little bit of tail off. Oh, I think it ripped. Yep, there we go. Okay. Take my scissors. There we go. And just take care of the rest of the ends the same way. And then there you have your finished scrubby. And you're ready to go wash some dishes. Yay!